today on the Bible Tract Echoes broadcast, I'd like to thank you for joining me, and we get to do a deep dive into the Bible. Imagine that. We're going to look at examples of the early church. We've been talking about the church here in discipleship study number eight, and I'd like to, this will help us, I believe, with an understanding of what the church in the modern day is supposed to look like by looking back. You see, the past often tells on the future. And if we forget our past, what happens? We're so prone to make the same mistakes as those with prior experience. How sad is it to recreate in inventive ways the same problems, issues, and circumstances of those that came before us when we have a guidebook like the Bible to help us make wise decisions to live like Jesus? And I'm excited to talk to you again about the church. We will talk about examples of the early church today, and then tomorrow we will review while also looking at the pastor's role in the church. Before we go any further, I will mention, and I promise I will not bring this to your attention for too much longer, but Your Decision 2020, our brand new track, it's still free. It's still available I'd like you to order some today, BibleTracksInc.org. It would absolutely blow me away if because of this radio broadcast, just like so many others that have listened in, if you would go to our website right now, if you do me the honor of visiting BibleTracksInc.org and ordering this track. If you're unfamiliar with our ministry, I'd love for you to do this. Order 25, maybe even 50 of the Your Decision 2020 tracks while also ordering a sample packet of ours. What that will do is introduce you to every single one of the 40-something tracks that we currently have on hand, as well as the Your Decision 2020 track. Now understand this, as we push close to a month away from the election, all of these tracks need to be put out before November Third, they are dated. On the inside, they have that date, November 3rd. They reference the election. And that means for such a time as this, these are very powerful tracks. And so we'd love for you to make use of them if the opportunity presents itself. I believe in you. I think if you ordered right now, you could have about 25 days to put out 25 tracks. I think you can do it. You'll probably need to put fuel in your vehicle two or even three times before the election. And so you leave one there at the gas station with the cashier when you go in to get your coffee. You leave one on the gas pump itself. You just gently, tenderly fold it over just a little bit and insert it in that gas pump so that the next person that pumps their gas, they have to pull it out and read it. It catches their eye. Maybe you need to get a haircut between now and the election. Leave one for your hairdresser. You'll probably go to the store about two or three times before November 3rd. And you know what? Every time you talk to that cashier and they hand you a receipt, here's what you say. Here is something I'd like you to read when you have a moment, maybe when you take a break, and then you just slide it across to them. Don't even anticipate that they'll say no. The likelihood is very slim. Do you know that it is very seldom that I have someone refuse to take one of these brightly colored eye-catching tracks? If you just slide it across to them and then just walk away, it won't take any more investment than that except for this. Every time you leave a track, Take about 15 seconds as you walk away and pray. Pray diligently that God will bless that track and use it for his honor and his glory. Order Your Decision 2020 from BibleTracksInc.org today. They're free. Our ministry has been putting out free gospel tracks just like this. This is not an odd occurrence for us. Nothing would make us happier than the opportunity to send you this track for free, especially if it's your first time interacting with our ministry. Now, turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts once again. The book of Acts, chapter number one. 
We'll look towards the beginning of the book of Acts there. I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles. Join me there. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. We're going to look at the book of Acts as a sort of history book on the early church. You see, Jesus began his church on the seashore of Galilee. And after his ascension and the power of the Holy Spirit coming on the disciples, the church exploded with growth. Let's look at why this early church in its infancy was able to do so much for the cause of Christ. Some Bible scholars believe that the early church there could have grown as large as 100,000 people. Let's find out why that was even remotely possible. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14 says this, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. That first phrase, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. First of all, the early church was a praying church. We see that all through scripture, but the book of Acts tells us, Acts 2.42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what? Prayers. Once again, in Acts chapter 6, verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You see, the Christians, the members of the early church, they did not get too busy to pray. You see, friend, it was a top priority. Nothing superseded the needfulness of prayer. Next, it was a passionate church. Once again, in the book of Acts, maybe follow me around as we read so many verses from this book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse number 6. Join me there quickly. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 6. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You see those members of that early church? They were extremely passionate about caring for the hurting. Next, it was a paying church, P-A-Y-I-N-G, Acts chapter 4. Turn over there for just a moment. Acts 4 and verse number 34 and 35 says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Those people... Those early church Christians, they willfully gave tithes and offerings to the church for God's work. Next, what kind of church, what kind of example did that early church set? It was a soul-winning church. Acts 2, verse number 47, look there for just a moment. Acts 2, 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Understand this, friend. God wants to grow his church, but he has established some methods. If you're not familiar with the idea of soul winning, we spent almost an entire two weeks on that topic. You can find that by looking for our podcast, the archived versions of this program. Just go to your favorite podcast platform, Spotify, Tune in Stitcher, Google, or Apple Podcasts, whatever you like to listen to podcasts on, and just search for Bible Tract Echoes. And you'll notice for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the topic of soul winning. Acts 8 4 says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Acts 8 35, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, talking about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And there are multiple other examples as well. For time's sake, we'll curtail that. But every Christian is supposed to be a soul winner. It's not just for the men of the cloth. It's not just for clergy. It's not just a pastoral responsibility. The growth of the church was phenomenal because every person, every member took it very seriously. You can look at Acts 2.41, Acts 4.4, 6.7, All of these verses talk about this subject. Next, it was a powerful church. 
Acts 4.33. Turn there for just a moment. Acts 4.33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Those disciples of the early church, the members there, they were accused of turning the world upside down with their doctrine. You see, friend, what they actually did and what we actually need to do is turn the world right side up. It's topsy-turvy. It's completely head over heels in sin. Our world is. It's our job to fix that. Next, it was a preaching church. Much of the book of Acts is made up of actual sermons. God blesses a church that majors on preaching. Let me give you some examples. Acts 2, Peter at Jerusalem preaching. Acts 7, Stephen before the council, before his martyrdom. Acts 10, Peter at Cornelius' house. Acts 13, 5, Paul and Barnabas. Acts 13, 16, Paul in Antioch. Acts 14, 7, Paul in Lystra. Acts 16, Paul in Thyatira. And about eight more examples could be listed off from the book of Acts. You see, preaching had a major role in that church. Let's look here. It was also a persecuted church. You see, friend, a growing church will also be an opposed church. It's evidenced in the scripture. In Acts 5, the disciples were beaten. In Acts 8, great persecution arose. James was beheaded in Acts 12. Paul was stoned in Acts 14. Paul and Silas were jailed in Acts 16. And at various other times, Peter, Paul, and many others were imprisoned. Friend, we must be ready for opposition. The early church grew the most while under persecution. Do we wilt or do we grow in the face of that sort of opposition? Lastly, this for today, it was a personable church. You see, soon after Saul's conversion, who later became known as Paul, the Apostle Paul, you may recall that name, someone came to Ananias, came to pray for him, calling him brother, welcoming him into the family. We are encouraged to call church members by name and have an example, a biblical example of calling each other brother or sister. You see, the church, it's a family. Acts 2.42, we end with this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and what? Fellowship. Communion. That sharing in common. Do you have a local church? We'll review all of this and bring some practical application tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. God bless.